Okay, this will be my first video on the theory of computation titled Alphabets and Strings because I figured that's just a good place to start. Um, well, let's talk about a little bit about the theory of computation, what it's all about. Well, essentially, it's the foundations of all computers, all the mathematics and all the abstract reasoning that computers do is all based on the theory of computation. And um, so let's talk about a little bit about the history. The history of it really um, goes way back, like way back, the, way before the modern computer was ever invented. Um, there were, you know, for since I think over a thousand years ago, maybe even before that, computer science, you know, the uh, ideas of you know um, automated reasoning machines. I think you know that that's been around for a while, but really it. Uh, the, um, it really came to fruition with uh, when, when mathematician and crypt analyst Alan Turing, um, who, who's, well, let me talk a little about that guy. So Alan Turing was, uh, again, mathematician and crypt analyst. He, was, he has a, an award named after him, the Turing Award, which is often referred to as the Nobel Prize in Computer Science. It's like the highest distinction. So what he did was, he basically, as a mathematician, he analyzed, you know, since what can you know what what can we get machines to do you know using you know logic can we you know perf we can perform any you know feat of mathematical deduction like we can do anything uh, logical or mathematical with machines you know just operate instead of having you know a person do it so it's all about you know logic very you know fundamental math so he basically you know studied and you know um, brought uh, the theory of computation to fruition you know he figured that if machines could you know just move around you know symbol like zeros and ones you can know we can do a lot of you know interesting things and because of his work you know we computer science you know really you know benefited and um not only was he a good mathematician a very a very skilled mathematician and very fundamental it, it, it established in computer science he also was again a crypt analyst and he helped in world war ii i believe uh decrypt uh messages by the enigma machine uh which is like a uh I think a cipher developed by Germany, and um, so yeah, he's he's per, well, he's pretty important, especially in this video series. So um, in, in addition to that, he also took out Gödel's incompleteness theorem, and uh, you know thought if if mathematics is limited, you know, by Gödel's incompleteness theorem in some senses, he also reasoned that that um, machine logical machines, you know, follow the same principle. So without further ado, let's just go right into the theory of computation. Uh, this is enough for a history lesson. Just Alan Turing, important guy, you know, kind of laid the foundations for mathematics behind computer science. All right, so this video is titled Alphabets and Strings. Now, what exactly is an alphabet? Well, an alphabet is basically like a uh, collection, a finite collection of symbols. Um, and we're going to keep it simple for that. Like, this is called a binary alphabet. This is a unary alphabet. This is binary because it's two. There are two elements in the set of the alphabet. You know, if you guys ever watch video series on set theory, you'll know what a set is, it's just a collection of objects. So, you know, in this alphabet, there are two two symbols that, you know, that are contained in the alphabet, which is just a set, just it, the terminology is a little different. Now, again, binary means two, two symbols, unary means one, and, you know, tertiary means three. In computer science uses binary logic, it's based on this alphabet of symbols right here. So, what is, well, let's say we have, the, so let's say we have one, one. Now, one, one is a string. Now, a string is basically like a collection of um, elements from a given alphabet. So, 1-1 one, one is part of alphabet 1. In addition, it's also part of alphabet 2. It's actually a string over. It's, it's You say string over alphabet 1. That's how you just generally say it. Now, it's also a string over alphabet 2 because 1 is, is, is you know, an element in the alphabet, and you can combine that to make a string. Just, it's, it's, it's contained in the alphabet. Now... Uh, an alphabet that contains no elements whatsoever is not an alphabet because it has to be a finite collection and zero doesn't count. And um, now, all in addition, while we're on that topic, if now if a given alphabet, I should put denoted subscript X for whatever alphabet we're dealing with, is greater than the set of natural numbers, if you guys watch my video series on continuum hypothesis, which is in set theory, um, this also means that the alphabet's not finite because just because that's how you define it. Now, in addition, we can also say that alphabet 2 is a strict subset of alphabet 1 because, you know, 1, the symbol 1 is contained here, but 0 is not part of alphabet 2. And also, it stands the reason from that that alphabet 1 is a strict superset of alphabet 2. Let me just uh, draw that in a little better. Okay, so that is, you know, again, alphabets are like a finite collection of symbols, also like a set, a set of symbols, exact, basically. And um, a string is basically a combination of... Um, 
uh, elements from the alphabet as long as it's contained in the alphabet. So one is contained in both these alphabets, it's zero, so it's contained in this one. And um, in addition, one one is a binary, str a binary string, and uh, one would just be a unary string. It, it kind of makes sense the more you think about it. Um, so yeah, this is, I guess, a basic introduction to alphabets and strings. Just, you know, symbols and uh, just strings are just combinations from the alphabet, uh, and that's the basic idea of alphabets and strings. Now, in the next video, we'll be talking more about how you build on those strings and um, uh, just how, how we build on it like, to make, like, languages and uh, words. And soon after that, we'll go into, uh, you know, some more more mathematics behind, you know, the the, tr the, the Turing machine. The Turing machine is um, a, a abstract, you know, model for a computer. That's really the crux, you know, the, the, the main, you know, backbone of what theory competition is all going to be about. Just gotta get the basics down first before we get into the more you know cool stuff that's widely used today. All right, so just a quick recap: uh, alphabet, you know, just finite collection of symbols. If it doesn't have any symbols, it's not an alphabet. If it has more than the set, if it has more elements than the set of natural numbers, also not an alphabet. It has to be finite. String is basically just the the alphabet, you know, you, you, parts of the alphabet, you know, in in a different set. I mean, just review this and it'll make a lot of sense. Okay, that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one.